some of my patients are confused about how their hip joint should actually be replaced. There is a lot of information available about hip replacement surgery with varying opinions about what is best. Now each surgeon has a particular preference and skill set for the type of procedure they use to replace a hip joint. This might be influenced by where in the world we completed our training, what surgical techniques we've been exposed to, and also what the evidence tells us works best for patients. Now every hip replacement technique does have pros and cons. So talk to your surgeon about why they prefer the particular technique that they use. It's also very important for me to highlight that no matter what technique a surgeon uses, a hip replacement is an excellent operation with very high levels of patient satisfaction and function. In fact, a number of studies have shown that no other operation in the world improves a patient's quality of life as much as a hip replacement. It's been an incredibly successful procedure for many years. There are three main techniques that a surgeon can use to replace your hip joint. We can replace your hip through the front or the anterior approach, the back or the posterior approach, or the side, which is called the lateral approach. Now you can think of each of these three approaches as being a different door to your hip joint. Each door leads to the very same place, just through a different path. The posterior approach, as the name suggests, replaces your hip through your bottom muscles. A surgeon separates the largest muscle in your body called the gluteus maximus, and that is located just under the skin of your buttocks. The surgeon then detaches some tendons around the bone of your hip to expose and replace the joint. At the end of the operation, these tendons are repaired back to the bone with suture material. The gluteus maximus muscle is also repaired back together with sutures. Personally, I only use a posterior approach in a small number of specific patients. However, many surgeons do use this approach for all their patients and the outcomes are very good. The lateral approach involves detaching part of a tendon called the gluteus medius tendon from the thigh bone. Now gluteus medius is one of the most important muscles and tendons around your hip joint. Once the hip is replaced, the gluteus medius tendon is then repaired back to the bone with suture material. I don't use a lateral approach in any of my patients. The direct anterior approach, which is a technique I prefer to use for the vast majority of my patients, takes place through the front of your hip joint. The size of the incision depends a little bit on the size of a patient, but in general it's quite small, about 6 to 10 centimetres in length. Rather than splitting muscles or cutting through tendons, we move in between the muscles on the front of the hip to gain access and replace the joint. At the end of the procedure, no muscles or tendons require repairing with suture because they have not been cut during the operation. The principle of the anterior approach is to allow patients to mobilise more quickly with less pain and weakness early after the operation. Temporary weakness is created when a muscle or tendon is cut until they heal and recover. It's for these reasons that I'm so passionate about the anterior approach for my patients, because it avoids cutting muscles and tendons. But again, I would stress that all hip replacement approaches give excellent results in the longer term. The most important thing isn't what approach your surgeon uses, it's their skill and experience with whatever technique they are comfortable with. So you need to make a choice about what is best for you and your hip. If you would like to talk to me about your hip, then please ring my rooms at any time to make an appointment. If you haven't already had appropriate scans, I can arrange for these to occur before I see you.